Good morning and welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. And I'm glad that you have joined us. Have the others involved in worship introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. Hi, I'm David Evans. I'm the ASL interpreter. God gathers us together. And so it is not an accident that you are here today with us in worship. God is the one gathering us. And so as we are gathered together, we light a candle to be reminded that we are not alone. So at this time, we will light a candle here. I'll light a candle here. And I encourage all of you to light a candle as well. And at this time, I invite you to focus on the candle flame to take some deep calming breaths. And let your body relax as we enter into worship together. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Let our praises ring. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, we do not look for Jesus among the dead. Jesus is alive and is the Lord of life. Teach our hearts and minds to trust in the risen life we share with Christ. Help us grow toward the fullness of life with you. We pray all of this and much more through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, it is good to be together again today. And we um, continue our stories uh, during this Easter season, uh, stories of Jesus showing up to uh, be with the disciples after the resurrection. And today's story is found in the Gospel of John. So we have been looking at these different stories in, the, in different Gospels. And so we're back to the Gospel of John in chapter 21 which is probably an epilogue. It's something that was added on to the end of the gospel. And it was probably written by someone 
other than the writer who wrote the rest of the gospel. Likely, this part of the Gospel of John was written to help the community that originally got the gospel, to help them understand what happened to the disciple who is called the beloved disciple or the disciple who Jesus loved. So two weeks ago, we were also in the Gospel of John when the disciples were locked in an upper room and then Jesus showed up in the locked room at different times to show his scars and to reassure the disciples and other followers of Jesus. He shared peace with them. And also at that time, the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples. Jesus sends the disciples to go out just like Jesus went out from God. And in today's story, we find the disciples doing what they used to do. They were fishing. They went out to go fishing for fish, back to their old habits, rather than fishing for people. So Jesus joins them, surprises them, challenges them, and encourages them to go out into the world again, encourages them. So at this time, I'd ask Dorothy to share the gospel lesson. Gospel of John, 21, verses 1 through 14. Later, Jesus himself appeared to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and this is how it happened. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we will go with you and set out on a boat. But throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was him. He said, children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, no. He said, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did. And there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around him for he was naked and jumped into the water. The other's disciples, other disciples followed on the boat, dragging in the net of full fish. They weren't far from the shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with a fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn, even with so many fish. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. My friends, grace and peace to you from Jesus the Christ. Jesus comes to us in our needs, feeds us, and sends us out to care for others. Amen. Well, my friends, in this Easter season of 2020, we have been reflecting a lot on how much more we can relate to the disciples this year than we've been able to in other years. 
we've been able to relate to those disciples as a congregation and as individuals. Because nothing right now is normal. And often we don't know what to do. Against our wishes as a society and as individuals, we have a lot of time right now to wonder and to reflect and to notice how God is showing up in our lives. And so I wonder if this is an opportunity for us to learn how to be, to become human beings rather than human doings. To learn more how to trust Jesus to show up and be with us. To learn again that we can trust Jesus to lead us. Before these days of uh, uh, being ordered to stay at home, many of us would have admitted that we were really much too busy for our own good, but really we didn't know what to give up. Before, many of us would have admitted that we needed to spend more time just being still, not running from here to there, meeting ourselves on the way out the door or back in, Many of us in, before, we would, we would have admitted that we felt like we were coming apart at the seams, barely able to hold our lives together. Now, many of us don't quite know what to do with ourselves. We are bugged that we no longer have the option to be so busy. Our freedoms have been limited in the short term so that in the long term, we are healthier and that people stay safe. Our individual freedoms have been limited for the benefit of others. And we have transferred our worries about being too busy and turn them into fears about things being too slow. And these Bible stories that we have about Easter, about Jesus showing up to be with the disciples, I think they can help us learn a little bit more about how to just be, how to be still, and be in the presence of Jesus. They can help us ponder with awe that Jesus comes to us, showing up through locked doors and sharing peace with us. That is awesome. God comes to us us. These stories remind us that Jesus shows up and walks with us. Jesus converses with us. And Jesus listens as we pour out our confusion, our fears, our griefs. This is what Jesus does. And Jesus is with us. These stories show us that Jesus comes and builds a campfire, joins us for a meal, and uses the food we have on hand to spend time with us.
these stories during Easter help us realize that we can ask Jesus to lead us, to use the gifts that God has for us, even in this time of lots of unknowns and disruptions to our lives. These stories during Easter promise to us that God is with us in the darkness, in the confusion, in these times when it seems like nothing is going right. Just think about those disciples. They were fishing all night long. They had no fish in their net. Nothing. So I wonder how you are spending time with Jesus these days. Because we do have lots more time to talk with Jesus. This week I've had some conversations with people and the question about how are you taking care of yourselves? How are you spending your time? What are you doing to keep yourself healthy? That question has popped up in all sorts of different conversations. And I've been writing down a list. So I wonder if maybe you're doing some of these things to learn how to be, how to stay with Jesus, how to ask God to show up and help you through these days where it's really either very frustrating, very lonely, very confusing, worrisome. I wonder if you could do some of these things to be with Jesus. Maybe you can take a walk every day. Go to the same place, observe the same trees, look for the birds. Notice how the environment around you is having a joyful time during spring. My daughter Catherine and I have been going for walks most every day since the um, stay at home order has been in place. And we have been noticing the birds so much more in this last week. In the mornings, they're out flying around, chatting with each other, having a great time has been very good for us to go for those walks every day. Maybe your time would be, um, the way you might notice Jesus showing up for you would be that you are in contact with your children every day. Enjoying the technology that allows us to see each other face to face. Perhaps you're taking more time to cook your meals, planning and preparing things that are a little more involved than you were used to doing when you were running around so busy. Perhaps now you're learning a new cooking skill, enjoying new kinds of foods and flavors in your life. Maybe you're taking some time to write a letter to someone or to uh, many someones who have been important to you. So just remember some stories you have with very special people from your life. Send them a note. Perhaps you're baking some new treats. A colleague of mine said she has a lot of uh, food limitations. And so it's very hard to bake like in a normal way. And she's been learning how to bake really delicious 
treats for herself and her family. Maybe you've been finding a blessing, time with Jesus, as you write a note to someone in the Bread of Life community that you know is lonely. Perhaps you've been having conversations with God as you do your spring yard work getting out and digging in the dirt, smelling all the smells of spring. Or perhaps you're finding that you need to have a slower pace, that it is hard to get out of bed in the morning, that it's hard to get dressed every day. And so maybe your pace is pretty slow and you're finding that God brings you comfort, he gives you solace for your spirit in that slow pace. Maybe your pets are helping you along, taking care of you with their presence. These are just a few ways that we know Jesus can show up with, for us and be with us. Because our Bible stories tell us that. They show us that Jesus comes to us in the normal, everyday things that we do. When we are washing dishes, Jesus comes to us and calms our fears and brings to mind those people who need our prayers. When we are folding laundry, Jesus teaches our hearts and our hands about caring for one another. When we are outside planting seeds, Jesus teaches us about patience and struggle that it takes to emerge from dark and difficult experiences. When we are taking time to cook and enjoy our food, to bake treats for others, Jesus teaches us the joy we experience in feeding others. So while many of us may feel sort of frustrated and anxious to get going with normal life again, let us take this opportunity to have lots of conversations with God. Where are we going together? What does our journey with God look like? Where is God leading us? You as an individual, me as an individual, but us together as a community of Bread of Life. We know Jesus comes to us. Jesus enters these difficult and unknown times in our lives. And Jesus can bring hope and healing and nourishment to us, even in difficult circumstances. So I want you to know I'm praying for you in these difficult days. I am praying that you will be with Jesus. Take time to be with Jesus. I'm praying that Jesus shows up in your room, breaks through your locked doors. I'm praying 
that you will take time to chat with Jesus, to pour out your confusion and fears and grief with the Lord. I am praying that you will experience Jesus' love for you right here, right now, even in the difficulties and confusion that we're facing. Amen. Now, as we pray for others. We lift up prayers of compassion for those devastated at this time. For those who have lost their jobs. For business owners whose businesses are lost. For those who have no home to stay at home in. For people in leadership whose hearts break over the suffering of the people in their care. For those for whom home is neither peaceful nor safe. For those who are angry and desperate to open our economy despite the risks. For those weary of fighting for the most vulnerable. For those who are the most vulnerable and are weary of bearing the load. For those who are dying alone. for those whose hearts ache with loneliness, for those who are shut off from anyone who might hold them when they are afraid, for those suffering who only God can see. God, make us more kind, more open-hearted, and more tender with everyone we meet today and every day. Peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. and also with you. Now is the time to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Perhaps we're getting used to this idea that we would pick up our phones in the midst of worship and send a text message or an email. Uh, maybe later on Sunday afternoons, now you've gotten into a habit of sending a card, writing a note to a couple of different people letting them know you are not alone, you are not forgotten. I encourage you to continue to reach out to people, to share the peace of God with them, to help them know they're not forgotten, to help remind all of us we are not alone. So please take a moment or two to share the peace of God with one another.
And now at this time, uh, we're to the part of our worship service where we remember that one of the acts of worship that we do in our lives is we share um, the resources and the money, our time, our talents, and the gifts that God has given to us. We share those with one another. We take that money that God has given to us and we share it. And through that, through sharing our money and through the relationships that we have in this world, our faith is put into action. Other people can see our faith. And so it's really important at this time where we're focused on staying away from one another to slow down the spread of this virus, it's really important for us to continue to act out our faith, to share our resources. Because we are still gathering for worship, because God is still acting in our world, because God is still calling us to work on our mission that we have with God. In this time of upset and unknowns, God is still working through us. We have opportunity to share this worship experience with friends far and near. It is easier for us now to share this kind of experience with other deaf people to go toward our mission of sharing the good news of God's love with deaf people and their families. So at this time, we invite you to prepare your offerings, to send in your offerings to Bread of Life as an act of worship, as an act of trust, that together with God, we can do impossible things. Now, as we trust you, God, with our offerings, we pray. God, you come to us. We give our offerings and our lives. Congregation, now lift our hearts to you like you lifted Jesus from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Just as God gathers us together, God sends us out to be a blessing. So receive this blessing now. Darkness has become light. Sorrow has given way to joy and to hope. As you have been transformed by the power of the cross. Go forth into the world and bear witness to the good news that you have received this day. We go in the name of the creator 
kind of the Savior and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share God's good news. And everybody said, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.